This video is brought to you by the Program Manager Infantry Combat Equipment, or PM ICE. PM ICE is a program management office within Marine Corps Systems Command located in Quantico, Virginia. This video is one in a series of videos PM ICE has developed in order to instruct, educate, and assist Marines in the proper form, fit, function, use, and care of infantry combat equipment being fielded by this program office. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper use of the United States Marine Corps PAC, or USMC PAC. The USMC PAC is the replacement to the Individual Load Bearing Equipment PAC, commonly referred to as the ILB PAC. We will begin by conducting an inventory of all components that make up the PAC. Though the USMC PAC will be issued pre-assembled, we will demonstrate how to assemble the PAC in the event you need to make repairs or adjustments. Additionally, the PAC has two torso configurations standard and long. All packs will be issued in the standard configuration. However, this video will demonstrate how to quickly convert the pack into the long torso configuration in case you want to change the torso configuration to better fit your torso length. As the pack is assembled, we will demonstrate the features of the pack. Additionally, we will show how to properly attach the pouches that are issued with the pack. Finally, we will demonstrate donning and doffing of the pack as well as the proper way to wear the pack with and without body armor. Please note that an instructional card will accompany each pack, which will include information presented in this video, as well as provide additional information not covered in this video. We are now ready to inventory the pack. The main pack consists of the frame, the shoulder harness assembly, the hip belt, and the main bag. With the main bag, you will also have two compression straps and two quick release lower half straps. Additional components include the assault pack, assault pouch, two sustainment pouches, two hydration pouches, the hydration carrier, the hydration bladder system, an optional use sternum cinch, a repair kit, and the instruction card. Before we assemble the pack, it is important to note that there are two size settings for the pack, the standard setting and the long torso setting. As mentioned earlier, each pack will be delivered in the standard setting. Marines 5'8 or taller may want to reconfigure the pack to the long torso setting. A quick way to determine whether a pack is assembled in the standard or long torso setting is to simply look to see where the side yib-yab tab is installed. If it is connected to the slot in the frame, it is a standard setting. If it is connected to the O-ring from the shoulder harness assembly, it is a long torso setting. This will be further explained during the assembly portion of this video. We are now ready to attach the shoulder harness assembly to the frame. The shoulder harness assembly consists of several straps, oval rings, and buckles. The shoulder straps have sewn-in load lifters, a sewn-in sternum cinch strap and buckle, and the quick release mechanism, all of which we will demonstrate later. The shoulder straps have a secondary connection point in case the quick release mechanism and or buckles become unserviceable. On the square portion of the assembly, you will notice there are four horizontal straps with O-rings. There are two upper horizontal straps and two lower horizontal straps. There are also four vertical straps also with O-rings. There are two upper vertical straps and two lower vertical straps. All of the straps will be used in either the standard or the long torso settings. However, they will be used in slightly different ways depending on which torso setting is used. This video will demonstrate the assembly for both settings, first the standard and then the long torso. We will now assemble the pack. The first step is to attach the shoulder harness to the frame. Lay the shoulder harness down on a flat surface with the padded shoulder straps on the deck and facing upward, the shoulder straps will form a V. All O-rings and straps will be facing up. For the standard setting, take all four vertical straps and route them through the loop webbing. This is the main difference between the two settings. On the long torso setting, you will not route the straps through the loop webbing. Before we place the frame onto the harness, take note that the frame has numbers and letters on it. The numbers one through 10 indicate where to attach the shoulder harness assembly and the letters A through E indicate where to attach the hip belt. The numbers and the letters are not a sequence of actions. They are location indicators. 
Place the frame on top of the shoulder harness with the numbers and letters facing up. For the standard torso setting, the top edge of the frame should be aligned with the top edge of the upper horizontal straps. Feed the two upper horizontal straps up through vertical slots 5 and 6 on the frame. Be sure to feed from the underside. Feed the two upper vertical straps with O-rings up through horizontal slots 3 and 4 on the frame. Feed the upper horizontal straps with O-rings up through vertical slot number 1 in the frame. Loosely thread the strap coming from slot number 5 up through the O-ring in slot number 1. Next, Feed the upper horizontal strap with O-ring up through slot number 2 in the frame. Loosely thread the strap coming from slot number 6 through the O-ring in slot number 2. Once both are threaded, tighten and secure both straps. Wrap the two vertical straps coming from the bottom of the shoulder harness assembly over the frame and thread into the corresponding O-rings at the top of the frame coming from slots 3 and 4. Tighten and secure. Wrap the two horizontal straps over the frame and through the corresponding O-rings. Tighten and secure. All straps should be tight and secure at this point. We will now demonstrate how to attach the shoulder harness assembly to the frame for the long torso setting. Ensure that the vertical straps are not running under the loop webbing. Place the frame on top of the shoulder harness assembly with the numbers and letters facing up. The top edge of the frame should be aligned with the top edge of the lower horizontal straps. Because the long torso setting does not utilize the two upper horizontal straps, Feed the two upper horizontal straps into their corresponding O-rings, secure, and lay flat. Feed the two lower horizontal straps up through the vertical slots number 5 and 6 on the frame. Be sure to feed from the underside. Feed the two upper vertical straps with O-rings up through horizontal slots 3 and 4 on the frame. Feed the lower horizontal strap with O-rings through vertical slot number 1 in the frame. Loosely thread the strap coming from slot number 5 through the O-ring in slot number 1. Next, feed the lower horizontal strap with O-ring up through slot number 2 in the frame. Loosely thread the strap coming from slot number 6 through the O-ring in slot number 2. Once both are threaded, tighten and secure both straps. Wrap the two vertical straps coming from the bottom of the shoulder harness over the frame and thread into the corresponding O-rings at the top of the frame coming from slots 3 and 4. Tighten and secure. All straps should be tightened and secure at this point. We will now install the hip belt to the frame. The hip belt consists of an adjustable waist belt, four horizontal straps with associated buckles, a lumbar pad, horizontal and vertical lumbar straps, and hip belt stiffeners on each side of the lumbar pad. Lay the hip belt on a flat surface so that all buckles and straps are facing up. The belt's curve should be pointing down. Locate the four horizontal straps, two on each side, coming from under the hip belt stiffeners. Starting with the left side, feed the straps through slots B and C on the frame. Thread loosely through the corresponding buckles and weave the running end of the strap back out of the same slot. Do not tighten yet. Repeat on the other side using slots D and E on the frame. Grasp the horizontal lumbar strap coming from the right side of the lumbar pad 
and wrap it over the frame and thread it through the corresponding O-rings. Pull to tighten. Locate the top vertical lumbar strap with O-ring and feed it through slot A on the frame. Wrap the bottom vertical lumbar strap over the frame and thread it through the O-rings. Pull to tighten. Tighten all straps until secure, keeping the hip belt centered on the frame at all times. Ensure that the hip belt stiffener is touching the frame on both sides. This will eliminate unwanted hip belt movement. Prior to attaching the main bag to the frame, we will discuss some of the features of the main bag. The main bag has many user-friendly features that will greatly enhance the Marine's overall experience with the pack. The lid has buckles for attaching the assault pack, PALS or pouch attachment ladder system loops, commonly referred to as molly loops, for attaching pouches, buckles for securing the lid to the main bag, two separate access zippers, and a durable mesh liner which reduces weight. Just below the base of the lid, there is a water-resistant zipper that allows for access to the radio control knobs or just to simply access the main bag. The opening of the main bag has two drawstrings with locking barrels. There are slots that allow for access to the drawstrings in case they need to be repaired or replaced. The storage portion of the main bag consists of a radio pouch with vertical and horizontal straps to help secure the radio in place and or to compress the contents stowed in the pack. The USMC pack also includes a separate compartment for the sleep system, a shelf that easily zippers and separates the sleep system compartment from the main storage portion of the bag. The outside of the bag includes numerous sewn-in compression straps and rows of PALs for attaching pouches. Directly below the PALs, there is a zipper that allows access to the sleep compartment as well as to the main storage area of the bag. The bottom of the main bag has additional PALs and a female buckle end which will be used for the compression straps which we will demonstrate later. The back portion of the bag has a carrying handle, two donning handles, and the sleeve in which the frame will be inserted. The back portion of the main bag also includes large D-rings that can be used to attach the shoulder straps in case the frame becomes unserviceable. Finally, notice the yib-yab tabs sewn into the bag. The yib-yab tabs located near the donning handles will be used when attaching the main bag to the frame. Where they attach will be determined by which setting, standard setting or long torso setting, you will be using. The yib-yab tabs located near the bottom of the bag will be used to secure the lower portion of the bag to the frame. We are now ready to attach the main bag to the frame. Lay the main bag down so that the donning handles are facing up. With the shoulder straps of the shoulder harness assembly facing you, slide the top of the frame into the sleeve on the back of the main bag. Pull the female buckle ends through the top of the sleeve and clip them to the male buckle ends on the load lifter straps located on the shoulder straps. Make sure that you connect the buckles coming from the shoulder harness assembly and not the buckles that are attached to the top of the sleeve. Those will be used to attach the assault pack to the lid later on. The next step is the final step that has two different configurations depending on which setting you are using, standard or long torso. For the standard setting, locate the yib-yab tab sewn into the main pack and thread it through vertical slot number 7 on the side of the frame. Be sure to pull the tab all the way through so that it is secure in place. Repeat for the other side using slot number 8. For the long torso setting, locate the yib-yab tab sewn into the main pack and thread it through the o-rings on the side of the shoulder harness. Repeat for the other side. Locate the left and right horizontal frame attaching straps just below the shoulder harness sewn into the main bag and wrap them around the frame and thread through the O-rings. Tighten and secure. We are now ready to attach the quick release lower half straps to the pack. Locate the shoulder straps and disconnect the quick release lower half straps by pulling the quick release straps on each shoulder. Lay the pack with the shoulder straps down and the PALs webbing facing up. 
Speed the twisted loop of one of the quick release lower half straps down through slot number 10 on the frame. Thread the buckle end of the strap through the twisted loop. Pull the strap until the loop is secure and tight against the frame. Repeat for the other side using slot number 9 on the frame. We are now ready to attach the compression straps. The compression straps assist in compressing anything stowed in the sleep compartment. They can also be used for attaching the sleeping mat. Feed the twisted loop of one compression strap down through the horizontal slot on the bottom left of the frame. To prevent twisting, the male buckles should be pointing down and should be under the strap webbing when feeding the twisted loop into the slot. Do not pull the buckles through the slot. Just the loop goes into the slot in the frame. Thread both male buckle ends through the twisted loop and pull until the loop is secured tight against the frame. Clip the lower male buckle on the compression strap into the female buckle at the bottom of the main bag. Ensure the compression strap is not twisted. Using the PALS loop second from the end, thread the remaining male buckle up through both rows of PALS webbing on the bottom of the bag. Clip the male buckle end into the female buckle end located just above the sleep system compartment zipper. Repeat for the other compression strap on the other side of the frame. We are now ready to complete the assembly of the pack. On the lower left side of the bag, locate the yib yab tab and feed it through the vertical slot near slot number 9 in the frame until it is locked in place. Repeat for the yib yab tab on the right side near slot number 10. Turn the pack over and fasten the buckle ends of the quick release lower half straps into the quick release buckles on the shoulder straps and fasten the snaps. Conduct a tug pull test to ensure the buckle is fully seated and locked into place. These straps will be adjusted when donning the pack. Now that the pack is fully assembled, let's discuss making the transition from the standard torso setting to the long torso setting. As mentioned earlier, the best way to determine which torso configuration that the pack is currently in is to simply look to see where the side yib yab tabs of the main bag are inserted. If they are inserted into slots 7 and 8 on the frame, the pack is set to the standard torso setting. If they are inserted into the O-rings, the pack is in the long torso setting. For disassembly, we will start from the bottom of the pack and work our way up. For reassembly, we will start from the top of the pack and work our way down. Start by laying the pack down so that the shoulder straps are on the deck. First, unbuckle the bottom set of buckles on the compression straps. Turn the pack over and undo the yib yab tabs that are inserted near slots 9 and 10 on the frame. Remove the side yib yab tabs from slots 7 and 8 in the frame. Unbuckle the load lifter straps on the shoulder straps. Slide the shoulder harness assembly out from the sleeve of the main bag. Starting with the lower horizontal straps, begin to undo the straps. You will undo the lower and upper horizontal straps as well as the lower and upper vertical straps that are holding the shoulder harness assembly to the frame. Remove the frame from the shoulder harness assembly. Pull all four vertical straps from under the loops in which they were routed through. Place the frame on top of the shoulder harness with the numbers and letters facing up. The top edge of the frame should be aligned with the top edge of the lower horizontal straps. Because the long torso setting does not utilize the two upper horizontal straps, feed the two upper horizontal straps into their corresponding O-rings, secure, and lay flat. Feed the two lower horizontal straps up through vertical slots 5 and 6 on the frame. 
be sure to feed from the underside. Feed the two upper vertical straps with O-rings up through horizontal slots 3 and 4 on the frame. Feed the lower horizontal strap with O-ring through vertical slot number 1 in the frame. Loosely thread the strap coming from slot number 5 through the O-ring in slot number 1. Next, feed the lower horizontal strap with O-ring up through slot number 2 in the frame. Loosely thread the strap coming from slot number 6 through the O-ring in slot number 2. Once both are threaded, tighten and secure both straps. Wrap the two vertical straps coming from the bottom of the shoulder harness over the frame and thread into the corresponding O-rings at the top of the frame coming from slots 3 and 4. Tighten and secure. All straps should be tight and secure at this point. With the shoulder straps of the shoulder harness assembly facing you, slide the top of the frame into the sleeve on the back of the main bag. Pull the female buckle ends through the top of the sleeve and clip them to the male buckle ends on the load lifter straps located on the shoulder straps. Make sure that you connect the buckles coming from the shoulder harness assembly and not the buckles that are attached to the top of the sleeve. Those will be used to attach the assault pack to the lid later on. Locate the yib yab tab sewn into the main pack and thread it through the o-rings on the side of the shoulder harness. Repeat for the other side. Finally, reinsert the bottom yib yab tabs back into their original slots near slots 9 and 10. And reconnect the lower set of buckles of the compression straps at the bottom of the pack. We are now ready to attach the assault pack to the main pack. Before doing so, we will discuss some of the features of the assault pack. The assault pack is similar to the main pack in that it has sewn-in compression straps, PALS webbing, a secondary shoulder strap connection point, a radio pouch, and several pockets for stowing smaller items. The shoulder straps and waist belt are stowable by simply unbuckling the straps and stowing them behind the padded sleeves. We will now attach the assault pack to the main pack. For a smooth attachment, unbuckle the shoulder straps on the assault pack and stow them behind the padded sleeves. Unbuckle the four compression straps on the assault pack and connect them to the corresponding buckles on the lid of the main bag. When tightening the straps, it is recommended to tighten the straps so that the assault pack rests away from the wearer's head. This will be further demonstrated when we don the pack later. We are now ready to attach the pouches. Though the pouches can be attached per the user's discretion and or unit standard operating procedures, we will demonstrate how to install each pouch in a common configuration. As with all pouches, utilize the entire attaching strap for a secure attachment. Use the common over-under method when attaching pouches to the PALS loops. The assault pouch was designed to be attached to the assault pack, however it can also be attached to the main pack. The hydration pouch is ideal for reducing weight when the hydration carrier and all its bells and whistles are not needed. When inserting the hydration bladder into the hydration pouch, be sure to hook the rim of the bladder cap through the loop inside the pouch. This will prevent the bladder from sliding down into the pouch. The sustainment pouches are attached in a similar manner. We will now discuss the hydration carrier and the bladder system. Similar to the assault pack, the shoulder straps of the hydration carrier are stowable. This makes for a smoother attachment when attaching it to the assault pack or the main pack. When attaching the hydration carrier to the main pack or the assault pack, utilize the four grim locks that come with the hydration carrier. The carrier has a handle and a small zippered pocket. To access the bladder, there is a flap with zippers on both sides. The bladder holds three liters of water. The covered removable tube consists of a tube holder, an open and close valve, a 
a push-to-release button that releases and removes the bite valve and a bite valve with cover. Refer to the instructional card for information on purifying water. We are now ready to don the pack. Prior to donning the pack, ensure the shoulder straps are extended enough so you don't get caught up in the straps when donning. Straddling the pack, bend down at the knees and slightly over at the waist and grasp the donning handles firmly. Ensuring no one is standing behind you, using your legs, stand up while picking the pack up and swinging it over your head. Immediately adjust the shoulder straps by tightening or loosening them. Use the load lifter straps to raise or lower the load to a comfortable position. The load lifter straps are located just below the tops of your shoulders. The buckles of the load lifter straps should angle back towards the pack at approximately a 45 degree angle. In order to take some of the weight off your shoulders, gently snug the load lifter straps to pull the load in towards your body. Over tightening the load lifter straps will cause a gap to form between your shoulders and the shoulder strap. Next, connect and adjust the hip belt so that a portion of the weight is resting on your hips. Unlike previous Marine Corps issued packs, the adjustment straps on the USMC pack hip belt are pulled forward to tighten, vice to the rear. For heavy loads, it is highly recommended that you utilize the hip belt straps. If desired, connect the sternum strap. To doff the pack, disengage the sternum strap, undo the hip belt buckle, loosen the shoulder straps, and remove the pack from the shoulders. For emergency doffing, first ensure you disengage the sternum strap, undo the hip belt buckle, and then pull either or both quick release tabs on the shoulder straps. We will now demonstrate and discuss the use of the optional sternum cinch. When wearing the USMC pack with body armor, the shoulder straps may slide off the shoulders and can begin to cut off the circulation in the upper arm. To mitigate this, the use of the optional sternum cinch is recommended. The sternum cinch consists of two plastic connectors and two straps that have a quick release mechanism. Ensuring that the snap on the connector is facing forward, wedge one of the connectors from the top down into a single outer pals loop on the chest of the body armor. Do not insert the snap through the pals loop yet. Locate the section of the sternum cinch strap that has the quick release pull tab. Lay that strap down with the quick release pull tab facing down and the metal quick release buckle facing outboard. Align the snap at the very end of the strap directly below the PALS loop that the connector went through. Route the connector through the loop in the strap. Push the connector into the next row of PALS and secure the snap. Using the exact same row of PALS, install the other connector and strap to the other side of the chest on body armor. It is important to ensure that the strap is laid out with the push button of the snap facing up and the metal quick release buckle facing outboard. Once installed, don the vest and then the pack. Pull the USMC pack's shoulder straps into the center of the chest and wrap the sternum cinch straps around the shoulder straps and engage the buckle. Tighten or loosen as necessary. To release, simply pull the quick release straps on the sternum cinch. Never use both the sewn-in sternum strap and the optional sternum cinch at the same time. Remember, when using the pack's quick release mechanism, be sure to always disengage the sternum cinch and the hip belt buckle first. This video was developed in order to assist Marines and sailors in understanding the purpose, the function, and the use of the new USMC pack. Any questions or comments can be directed to PMICE by emailing PMICE at PMICE at USMC.mil.